the US military says it has killed 62 fighters from the Islamist group Al Shabaab in six airstrikes in Somalia. Four airstrikes on Saturday killed 32 militants, and a further two on Sunday killed 28, it said. In a statement, these were the deadliest air attacks in Somalia since November 2017, when the United States said it had killed 100 militants. Somalia has seen a sharp increase in the number of airstrikes and casualties since President Donald Trump took office in the US in January 2017. A tally by the Bureau of Investigative Journalism reveals that at least 400 people have been killed in airstrikes since the beginning of 2017, far more than the previous 10 years combined. The latest strikes bring to at least 40 the number carried out in Somalia so far this year, compared with 35 recorded in 2017. The US has a huge military base in neighboring Djibouti, from where it launches attacks on the militants. Mr. Trump gave the US military greater authority in March 2017 to attack militants in Somalia. Traditionally, United States presidents have been wary of intervening in Somalia since 18 special forces soldiers died fighting militias in the capital Mogadishu in 1993. A battle dramatized in the film Black Hawk Down. Most civilians were killed in the latest air strikes, which were carried out in coordination with the Somali government. The US military said, Alongside our Somali and international partners, we are committed to preventing Al-Shabaab from taking advantage of safe havens from which they can build capacity and attack the people of Somalia, the US Africa Command said. Al-Shabaab, which is linked to Al-Qaeda, has not yet commented on the latest strikes. Somalia-based security think tank the Hero Institute said. In a report published in November that Al-Shabaab had been forced to change tactics following the upsurge in airstrikes, the institute said the group was now conducting fewer mass attacks on military bases, but attacks on government offices and businesses which refused to pay its taxes had increased markedly. The US State Department, in its most recent report on terrorism, described Somalia as a terrorist safe haven and said Al-Shabaab remained a threat despite suffering setbacks. The group retained control over large parts of the country and the ability to carry out high-profile attacks using suicide bombers, explosive devices, mortars, and small arms. The report added two Hungarian lawmakers have been thrown out of the state TV headquarters after they tried to broadcast a petition against new labor laws. A video showed one of the MPS trying to climb over a stair banister before being dragged out of the building. Several MPS camped out at the TV office overnight in protest against what they called the government's slave laws. Murus main companies can demand up to 400 hours of overtime a year and delay payment for it for three years. Hungary has seen five days of street protests against the reforms, with about 10 people rallying in Budapest on Sunday. Such demonstrations are rare in Hungary, where Prime Minister Viktor Orban is policies enjoy widespread support. Despite repeated condemnation from other EU nations, the government says the labor reform will benefit workers as well as companies who need to fill a labor shortage. About a dozen opposition lawmakers spent the night at the offices of Hungary's main news channel, MTVA, trying to get a list of demands broadcast on air. On Monday morning, independent MPS Bernadette Shell on the coast had to see, try to circumvent guards, and were wrestled out of the building. Miss Shell streamed the incident live on Facebook. Since they were ejected, other opposition MPS have taken their places.
inside the building, and the standout continues. The BBC sneak for reports from Budapest. Meanwhile, anti-government protests have continued outside the office. The protests have been led by trade unionists and students. They have demanded that the new Labour law be withdrawn and called for an independent judiciary, independent public media, and far Hungary to join the EU public prosecutor's office. One protester, student Lakux Hayes, described the new Labour law as involuntary overtime. While the government says any overtime is voluntary, that does not leave the ones that will not want to do overtime in a very good place in terms of the company that will give work for them. Mr. Hayes told the BBC in elections earlier this year, the Prime Minister's fetish party won a two-thirds majority in Parliament, making it relatively easy to gain approval for his policies. The government says the laws address a serious labor shortage. The country's unemployment rate, at 4.2% in 2017, is one of the lowest in the EU. Hungary's population has been in decline for years. As death south base births, according to the European Statistics Agency, Hungary is also experiencing a brain drain, as well educated people take advantage of free movement within Europe. The problem is serious enough to have prompted a 2015 program to encourage young people to return home, offering housing and employment support. Fidish Matt Georgi Shopflin told the BBC the reforms had been heavily distorted by the opposition. There was no coercion involved in working overtime, and workers would be paid monthly, not in three years, he said. The governing Fidesz party has said the protests are the work of foreign mercenaries paid by Hungarian-born United States billionaire George Soros. Mr. Soros denies this and says the Hungarian authorities are using him as a scapegoat. An Iraqi religious leader has laid a foundation stone for the rebuilding of Mosul's Great Mosque of al Nuri which was damaged by Islamic State militants. The head of the Sunni Muslim endowment, Abdul Latif al humayyim was joined by the United Nations and the dignitaries for the ceremony. The mosque, whose leading minaret was one of Mosul, his most famous landmarks, is where his leader Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi proclaimed a caliphate in 2014. The jihadist group blew it up last year, as government forces retook the city, the battle for Mosul lasted almost nine months, left large areas in ruins, killed thousands of civilians, and displaced more than 900 others. The Arab representative of the Arts Cultural Agency, UNESCO, told those attending the ceremony on Sunday that the Great Mosque of Al Nuri is destruction had been a moment of horror and despair. Today, as we lay the foundation stone, we are starting a journey of physical reconstruction, Louis Hexton added. The United Arab Emirates have donated 50美元, M, 40美, for the project, which is expected to take five years. The first year will be focused on documenting and clearing the site. The next four years will see the rebuilding of the minaret, the prayer hall, and adjacent buildings, Mosul is historic gardens and other open spaces will also be restored, and a memorial and museum built. The Great Mosque was named after Nur al-Din Mahmud Zanji famous for mobilizing and unifying Muslim forces to wage jihad against the Christian crusaders who ordered its construction in 1172, shortly before his death. Despite its connection to such a figure, all that remained of the original mosque until June 2017 was its minor ad nicknamed El Hadbo, or the Humpback, some columns and the Mahar app, and which indicating the direction of Mecca. It is not clear whether the minor ad will be rebuilt with its distinctively UNESCO calculated in 2012 that it was too. Umi.
ba, three foot, of the perpendicular axis. A fan of Israeli PM Benjamin Netanyahu says Facebook blocked him for 24 hours amid a spat over several posts railing against Palestinians and Muslims last week. Facebook removed a post by Yair Netanyahu in which he called for avenging the deaths of two Israeli soldiers killed by a Palestinian, a post in which the 27 year old said he would prefer if all Muslims leave the land of Israel was also taken down. He called Facebook, thought police, but it accused him of hate speech. Mr. Netanyahu drew widespread criticism last year after he posted a meme mocking some of his father's critics, including billionaire financier George Soros, which the Anti-Defamation League said was anti-Semitic. He also faced a public backlash over his reported failure to pick up his dog, Ispoo.